You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for The Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. The Biden administration is announcing plans to invest almost $93 million to create jobs and reduce energy costs in rural Wisconsin. The USDA's Julie Lassa says the money will go directly to farmers, business owners, and power cooperatives. Biden was in Wisconsin last month to talk up his administration's rural energy initiatives. The Wisconsin Supreme Court is considering the governor's expansive partial veto power. The high court heard oral arguments yesterday over Governor Evers' veto last year that increased public school spending for 400 years. Justice Jill Karofsky. This does concern me where we have a legal scholar and he's looking at all 50 states and he's saying, Wisconsin, you're not, we don't think you're doing this right. There ought to be some limitations. The court will hand down a written ruling in a few months. A new Quinnipiac poll finds Donald Trump with a slight lead in Wisconsin. 48% of likely voters support the Republican and 46% back Democrat Kamala Harris. With a margin of error of plus or minus three percentage points, the race is pretty much still a tie. The same poll gives Tammy Baldwin a four-point lead over Eric Hovde. A record high number of adults with disabilities have jobs in Wisconsin, more than 178,000 as of last year. Melinda Craig is a disability employment specialist. She says workers with disabilities seem to have better luck finding jobs with small businesses. We do find that it's a little more difficult to connect with those bigger companies to encourage them to hire individuals with disabilities. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The mice are so bad right now on Rock Island State Park off the tip of Door County that the remote spot is now closed to camping for the rest of the season. A massive infestation is reportedly chewing through tents, shoes, and even plastic storage bins. DNR wardens suspect mild weather last winter helped the mouse population on the island explode. Wisconsin's newest license plates are raising money for the International Crane Foundation. The plates were designed by Wisconsin artist Jay Jokum. They feature a sandhill crane and a whooping crane. The Crane Foundation gets a tax-deductible $25 gift with each new plate and annual sticker renewal. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For 540 WAUK News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Today's the deadline for those looking at serving in Waukesha. A seat on the Waukesha Common Council is up for grabs, but only for people in the city's third aldermanic district. The vacancy created by Cassie Rodriguez's resignation will be filled by appointment next Tuesday. Prospective candidates have until the end of the day to apply with more information on the city's website. As the UW-Milwaukee Chancellor prepares to step down next year, the UW system is launching its search for his replacement. A search committee is expected to be announced in the next couple of weeks. That committee will lead the selection process to find the university's 10th chancellor. Mark Monet, who's led UWM since 2014, plans to return to work at the Lubar College of Business following his July 2025 departure. Four Wisconsin school districts, two locally, are facing federal civil rights complaints from LGBTQ plus advocacy groups. Muskego Norway schools and the Hartford Union High School District are accused of violating Title IX by allegedly fostering hostile environments for transgender and non-binary students. The complaints are targeting districts that have allegedly eliminated or excluded gender identity from their anti-discrimination policies. Bones discovered during construction at a Milwaukee school have been dated to the mid-1800s. Work briefly stopped at the Maryland Avenue Montessori School after the bones were discovered. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office says the remains are likely connected to a cholera outbreak in 1849. Milwaukee Public Schools had been planning to add a greenhouse to that site. The Brewers games next year will likely be on the Brewers Channel. The team is done with its deal with Bally Sports Wisconsin and are partnering with Major League Baseball for the telecast next year. A Brewers official confirmed this week that fans will still be able to watch games on cable and satellite with a dedicated Brewers TV channel. A streaming service will be available for those that want to subscribe. And that's news on 540 WAUK. I'm Stuart J. Waddles. 
Bucks basketball tonight. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NBA. It's the Bucks and the LA Lakers in a preseason matchup at Five Serve Forum in Milwaukee. The Bucks' new shooting guard Gary Trent Jr. says he's okay after suffering a hyperextended elbow against Detroit. How's it going? Uh, we've been pretty good, being proactive about getting back on the floor. We had a good practice today, and our goal is continue to keep building through the preseason. College football: the Badgers have their final practice before flying to New Jersey to take on Rutgers. Wisconsin is 3-2, and two, Rutgers 4-1. and one. NFL, the Packers getting ready to play the Cardinals. The only player to miss practice, defensive tackle Devontae Wyatt with an ankle injury. Back at practice, wide receiver Romeo Dobbs. Matt LaFleur on having to suspend Dobbs last weekend. You never want to get to that point. And that's why I think, you know, one thing that's so important for all of us involved is you got to communicate. That's Packers head coach Matt LaFleur. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. There have been whispers over the years in Hollywood that Halle Berry and Billy Bob Thornton had actual sex during the filming of Monsters Ball. Berry appeared on Dax Shepard's Armchair Expert podcast to officially state that she and Thornton did not have sex during the filming, adding that Thornton was married to Angelina Jolie at the time. Billy Bob also denied rumors in 2012 on a different podcast. Barry became the first black woman to win a Best Actress Oscar for her performance in the 2001 film. Pretending to enjoy sex with Billy Bob probably really stood out. Misfit singer Chapel Roan called her high school theater teacher the B-word on stage. Roan is apparently still salty that she got kicked out of the theater club in high school. Since then, her legion of social media followers came to her defense and share their own horrible relationships with high school theater teachers being mean and kicking kids out of theater programs across the globe. Look inward, Chapel, and followers. Maybe you're just really bad actors. It's always fun when A-listers with good track records team up on a movie project. Deadline reports that Christopher Nolan's next film will be at Universal, the same studio studio behind Oppenheimer, a film that took home multiple Oscars and made almost $1 billion worldwide. Oppenheimer actor Matt Damon is rumored to play the lead. Like all Nolan projects, the plot of the film is a big secret, but the film is expected to start shooting in 2025 and will have an IMAX release July 17, 2026. Jenna Fisher just disclosed that she was diagnosed with breast cancer last fall, but is now cancer-free. Fisher played Pam Beasley on The Office for the run of the show and decided to go public with her cancer struggle this month, given that she was diagnosed in October 2023. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. She is using her platform to encourage all women to get their routine mammograms, saying if she had waited another six months, it might have been too late. Good advice. Grief can affect people in different ways. When Lisa Marie Presley lost her only son, Benjamin, in 2020, she literally could not say goodbye. CNN Entertainment reports that Lisa Marie, Elvis's only child, kept her son's body at home for two months after his death. Presley's memoir, From Here to the Great Unknown, was published posthumously. Lisa Marie passed away in January of 2023. Her memoir was completed by her daughter, actress Riley Keough, who used tapes that her mother had made to complete the work. Keough says there are no laws in the state of California that state a body needs to be buried immediately. So they kept Benjamin's body on ice in a room where the temperature had to be 55 degrees. She also says that Lisa Marie wanted to do this because Elvis's body was kept at their home after he died of a heart attack when he was 42, which allowed Lisa Marie to take her time and say a proper goodbye. Lisa Marie Presley and Benjamin Presley were both buried with Elvis at Graceland Cemetery. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. These mild summery temperatures are only going to hang around for a couple more days after that. Fall will arrive today, mostly sunny, 67 tonight down to 54. We'll get to 80 tomorrow. After that, we're talking 50s to low 60s through the weekend and into next week. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 41. That's your WAUK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WAUKradio.com. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 